All right, ladies and gentlemen, we last left off, uh, closing off real quick on how to do means. Just remember, it's down, multiply, add. Sorry, for you guys, it's multiply, add, like that. There we go. Whoop, whoop. Okay, remember? Um, and uh, I'm going to teach you how to use your calculators today. Um, and so we're just getting to standard deviation. I said, don't worry about standard deviation. All right, but we're going to do standard deviation today. Remember, this is for discrete variable, and discrete is uh, when we can list out every single outcome. Um, it's not continuous, doesn't have a million different outcomes, or a billion, or a trillion. Um, it, we can actually list out all the outcomes. So, how can we do standard deviation? Well, um, you'll if you remember, there's this uh, word called variance, and you'll see that's starting to pop up some. In fact, they might throw that into like some test questions or things like that. Variance, all variance is, is it is your standard deviation squared, okay? So that is the same thing as your variation, or your variance. Now, I, I've been doing stats now, this is probably like my seventh year doing stats, and I have never really ever used variance for any other reason than an ends to the mean. Basically, I'm, I'm looking to get to standard deviation. And variance is the step right before I can find my standard deviation. Okay, um, we will learn um, in the next section 6.2. Yes, you will need to square your standard deviation, which yeah is a variance. But basically, variance. Just remember, if you're given a standard deviation square, it's the same thing as variance. How much things vary. Like I said, I've never used it before in AP stats except for an n to the mean and trying to find out what my standard deviation is. So here's a formula for variation, okay? Or sorry, for variance, okay? And it is, notice how it says your standard deviation is squared. Um, and it's this ugly thing. You know, normally I say, hey, let's do it at least once by hand. But guys, seriously, uh, don't. I always say you got to be smoking paint chips, sniffing, smoking paint chips too, sniffing paint chips to want to do this by hand. It looks, I don't know, who wants to do that by hand? So everybody get out your calculators. Um, we are going to do some fun stuff here. All right. And uh, all right. Now, um, so we need to find the standard deviation for this for the APGAR scores all right now we found mean so I'm gonna blow this up a little bit all right there you go okay I've searched and searched and searched try to figure out a way to show my screen better but this is the best I got ladies and gents all right and you're gonna to want to go back to the heart of the calculator right there the stat button okay sorry guys and you get this thing right all right now you're gonna to want to go and press enter all right, now I don't know where enter is, but so I'm going to press enter on that. And you're going to get your L1, L2, all that kind of good stuff. So here, for the sake of time, I already entered in all of my L1, which I call my values, and then my probabilities into L2. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. All right, so what I did was I entered all of this into basically my, L, well, I call this my X. It's not really an X. Um... I'll tell you why it's not really an X. <clears throat> Just a bit. I put this into my L1. I put this into my L2. Okay. And uh, you guys can get there. Okay. Super easy lesson here today, guys. All right. Once you put in your L1, L2, all right, you're going to go back to the heart of the calculator, the stat button right there. Okay. You're going to go over. Sorry, this is really hard to calculate. Now you have <clears throat> one or two variable statistics. Are we working with one variable? Or are we working with two variables? And I know what you're saying. Ooh, I put something into L1 and I put something into L2. So that's two variables. What are we checking here? What's the whole point of this? APGAR score. Guys, that's one variable. What's your APGAR score? It's not like, you know, APGAR score and your GPA. 
high school GPA, yeah, then that would be doing two variable. That'd be finding correlation, but correlation does not prove causation, baby. No, sir, no, sir. Oops. Ah. Okay. So, I literally wanted to select one variable stat. I'm going to enter. Okay. Now it'll say, oh, okay, so one variable, it's in the list. One, all right? But you say, oh, but you know what? I do have a frequency, right? The probabilities of each event happening, right? All the events, uh, you know, my APGAR scores are in L1, but the frequency or the amount that they happen is in L2. So just in case you haven't figured out L2, you press the second button here, okay? And then you go down to the 2, and right above the 2, there's L2. All right, now, whoop. all right, there we go, L2, and you just go to calculate and hit enter. All right, now, in case you are lazy and don't like the whoop, whoop, right, whoop, whoop, you can also find your mean, all right? The mean in the APGAR scores was 8.12, I don't know why I'm pointing at the screen. Oh, yeah, hey, it's right there, guys, right there. Um, the mean is 8.128, but notice down here, standard deviation is 1. 0.43722. Got that? 1.43722. All right, that's out of my calculator. That's how easy it is. It was 1.437, we'll say. All right, now remember, I usually say you only have to round to two decimals here unless you're working with percents. But that's going to be the mean or the standard deviation. Now, if we wanted to do it by hand, I do have the long way. There it is. Woo okay. You'll get the variance. By the way, this isn't your standard deviation formula. No, you'll get 2.06 and you'll be like, how come I didn't get the same answer? Why am I not getting the same answer? It's because this is the variance and variance is the standard deviation square. So that's right, baby. You got to square root it. I made a root plus or minus. Right. However, variance is never negative, so you're always going to take the positive. By the way, do you know that standard deviation is always positive? It's always positive, never negative. Cool thought, hey? Cool thought. All right, and then how would I describe it? Well, standard deviation, basically, on average, people are away from that 8.1. Remember the mean? I'm going to go the mean. The mean of these APGAR scores was 8.12. Okay, that was the mean, right? So that's the average. But <clears throat> on average, people are about 1.437 away from that, right? So that's kind of like our center area, but they they do deviate, all right? That's why we call it a deviation, and it's the standard or the average. All right, so um, when it says here, okay, this is uh, on our homework. Hopefully you guys got down to it. Says what's the average goals per game? What's the distribution of the goals scored? No, no, no. Uh, maybe I didn't. I thought I put on about deviation. Maybe not. Super easy though, right, guys? Okay. Plug it into your calculator. Okay. All right. Next. Continuous. We got about seven minutes. Continuous. Continuous means. There's no way to list out all the events. I mean, it's impossible. It's not like, you know. How many ways can I flip it? Heads. Or, you know, how many cats do I have? Okay. You can't have a billion cats. I know some of you are like, oh, yes, I could. But. Continuous means it, it just goes on forever. So, for instance, weight. Can I list out every category of weight? Oh, well, you know, 210. Well, 210.0001, 210.001, 10.0001, 10. you know, it just goes forever and ever and ever. So, it's just not, it's not nice. Continuous, the only way we can do continuous and figure out probabilities is by doing what we call the density curve. Okay, and yes, ladies and gentlemen, bring back the z-scores. Bring it back, right? Because the density curve will be like this guy. By the way, I'm using a mouse. Okay, forgive me. All right, that's the best I got. 
Um, and so Z scores are going to be there. Now, also, ah, we'll find, we'll figure out the bottom stuff here in a little bit. Okay, you can fill it out, but hopefully we'll have time to figure this out. Okay, so um, uh, here's the heights of women. They figured out that the mean uh, of women is 64 inches. Standard deviation is 2.7 inches. Okay, find the probability the chosen woman is between 68 and 70 inches. Okay, so for sake of time, okay, this is basically I've got this normal curve, right, with a center of 64. And I want to know the probability of getting somebody between a 68 whoop, and 70. I know this is way not even realistic intervals, but I want to figure out that interval in there, right? So I'm going to do a z-score. So next page, I've got it all worked out for you. It's just beautiful. All right, so the first z-score, you're going to get what I got, 68, minus what I should have got, 64, divided by a standard deviation of 2.5. Seven. So Z score of roughly a 1.48. Get out your yellow sheets, all right? Next, your Z score. What I got, 70 was my high end. Minus what I should have got, 64, divided by standard deviation of 2.7. I get a Z score of that. Now, if I look those up in the charts, that baby right there will give me a probability below 68. I'm sorry, no. Ah, my bad. It's my high minus my low. My high minus my low. We're gonna do a little crisscross applesauce here. All right, that guy right there is right there. Oop. And that guy right there is right there. Okay, it's always your high minus your low. So how much area is below this point is 98. How much is below this guy? Well, 93. So what's the area in between them? It would be about 5%. So what's the probability? of getting somebody it would be 0 0.05 I forgot 0 0.0562 0 0.0562 all right we're gonna end this in 15 minutes you can't hold me back all right so what's probability chosen woman is between <coughs> 68 and 70 inches tall <clears throat> you have a five percent chance of get, getting some random pulling a random female in and saying, hey, yo, how tall are you? Ah, 5% chance, almost 6%. Find the probability a chosen woman is 60 inches tall, exactly. All right, so what's the probability that 60 inches, so the middle is 64, right? All right, I love this talk, I love this right here. What's the probability she's 60 inches tall? All right, now ladies and gentlemen, what is the probability she's exactly 60 inches tall? You're not finding the area below here because this would be people less than 60 inches tall. I want to know a probability of exactly 60 inches tall. This is a trick question because I don't want the area below. I want exactly 60 inches. Well, I know this will really cook your noodle but the probability someone's exactly 60 inches is like zero. You have a 0% chance of getting somebody who's 60 inches tall. Because I guarantee you, somebody who appears 60 inches tall is going to be actually 60.001 inches tall and not exactly 60. In fact, there's an argument out there that says, you know, we are never at a certain weight. We are always fluctuating, right? We are always burning. And maybe at one brief moment, I actually weighed, you know, 210 <coughs> for one brief millisecond, but not even really. I'm just, because my weight, I'm burning off. Sorry, I'm burning off. And then I'm eating and gaining. And I'm burning off and I'm just fluctuating constantly. I am never a certain weight. That'll cook your noodle, guys. All right, so if they're ever looking for exact amounts with just one number, it's not possible. You're never going to find somebody who's a certain weight, who's a certain height. They're always going to be, you have a 0% chance, like nobody's going to be exactly 60 inches tall, basically what they're saying. Brain fried. All right, guys, have fun trying to do your homework, all right? Um, here's the homework that I do, and... Uh, We'll see you later.